Hey, didn't see you there. I saw ya. You got a real good vibe going on today. You look nice and warm, you're sticky in all the right places that need to be sticky and slick in all the others. But it's hot, and we got to, we got to fix this. Today we're gonna to be talking about all AC systems and old garbage cars, vintage air, old air, air stuff, classic auto air, sand and compressors, not sand and compressors, Chinese compressors. Finally, we're gonna be 3D printing some car parts and they totally won't melt. Probably, probably not. First thing you gotta do, get them hose. Or well, the, these hoses. Yeah, these hose right here. Yeah, those look real good. Real crimped nice. Um, I don't really have much else to say about this part. Crimp them like this, I guess. Sometimes you just gotta use whatever fitting fits on whatever fitting's in. But if you can, make one fitting straight and then the other the crazy whatever one you need to do. That way you can clock your hose however you need to clock it and the other end will always just work out because it's straight into that bad boy. The next thing on your shopping list is an AC condenser. Think of that as a radiator for your AC system. All that mean, nasty heat inside your car, it's gotta go somewhere and that, that, that somewhere is your AC condenser. I need every single ounce, or pound in bald eagles, of cooling performance for my systems, especially if you've got like an undersized condenser. Don't be coating it with something that doesn't allow it to dissipate heat better, or, or do, it doesn't, it doesn't, probably doesn't matter. Nothing looks worse on your car and actually could affect airflow performance than all look like World War III is taking stage on your condenser or radiator. So go ahead and take the one chance you got to straighten these all fins looking real nice like yeah that looks real good perfect i decided to 3d print these brackets out of pet g and instead of just make them out of metal like a normal human being um because I, I gotta justify owning a 3d printer like everything i can figure to throw at it to make something well uh, well this 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 is why so this is my first experiment with plastic brackets for the upper radiator but for the bottom i always like to use saddle brackets kind of like a radiator normally has to make these saddle brackets, I like to pedi them. That's a reference to Dumb and Dumber where they cut the head off the bird and you pedi it. Anyways, cut the top off the metal bracket and then you're left with some saddle brackets after you finish it up and then drill some holes and that'll get you somewhat mounted. Or, well, it, it should because if you did all that and it didn't mount it, we, we there, there's another problem, I guess, at that point. Just throw that in there. Drop that in there and just keep throwing things in until they, they fit or if you have to hammer them in there, or just hammer smartly, or, or lightly. Just hammer it, nobody cares, just hammer it in there. Once you think you've got it installed, go ahead and second guess yourself and step back and look at the condenser through the grill. Make sure it's level, because this is something that's, that's uh, <laughs> this is actually remarkably easy to mess up. All sorts of weird stuff happens to cars. You get bumped, dinged, smashed, smushed, smidged, splooged. That way it doesn't look all cousin Eddie crazy eyes behind the grill. You don't want that, unless you do. And then do that. Now we're gonna get into a controversial topic of AC compressors and what's the best. This is a standard Sandin 508 compressor. Well, style of, <laughs> let's be very clear. This is not a real Sandin compressor, but I, I don't like Sandin compressors and I know I just triggered like three people out there in the world, got mad, but hear me out. I've been using eBay, Amazon, Chineseum, whatever you wanna call the knockoff sand in compressors that look like a 508. Out of the dozens of systems I've installed over the years, I've only had two issues with the Chinese AC compressors, but every single sand in compressor I've had an issue with. It's because they're too nice. I know, I know, you're like, Matt, that, that doesn't make any sense. If you've got a compressor with really tight tolerances and they, they went to town on the specs on this thing, the issue is when you power that compressor on, it pulls your RPMs down a lot. Dude, fix your guys' car every day. Every day, not every day. You can't do it every day. You fix it at some point or just ignore it. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, he just does not fix that belt squeak. And that's what'll happen if you choose the sand in 508 compressor. Just kidding, but a Chinese compressor, they don't got the tolerances you need for something like that, no. They don't pull the RPMs down nearly as much in my experience. So why that matters? Well, if you've got an LS engine and it doesn't have the AC request wire hooked up because the AC request wire only existed on like some random vans from like the mid-2000s, well, 
Well, you, you just gotta let stall protection take in. If you've got a carburetor, you either have to do the high idle solenoid thing or just turn it up a little bit in summer, like I, I usually do. Stick to the good old fashioned American Chinese built compressors and you're not, you're not gonna have that problem. And that's the reason why you gotta swap the oil out of your AC compressors. The oil that comes in these things is, I, I've seen every color of the rainbow come out of it from like straight up black goo to like oddly clear to menacingly tan and brown. I don't know what they put in these compressors in China. They always say though that they are factory filled with oil. I, I would challenge that this Harbor Freight vacuum pump has ran on new takeout AC compressor oil for over a decade. And it doesn't sound so hot. <laughs> Fill it up with fresh pag oil, 100, 150, it seems to do okay. Go ahead and put dye in there because you've got two options here. You can either put dye in it now so when it leaks you'll see it, or you can put dye in it later when it leaks and you'll need to see it. So go ahead and put dye in it now is what I'm trying to say. I like these compressors from Yogi Bear Motor Works Incorporated Hot Rods for two different reasons. A, I trust them because I've never had a failure. And two, just look at how this comes out on the back right here. Oh yeah, that's your suction and discharge line. Not on top like an amateur, like a filthy amateur actually. No, it's on the back like a dirty non-amateur. That's where you want it. Just look how clean that is without all that nonsense on top. This way your hoses can go in the back door just like the Lord intended. One word of advice though, if you've got your pressure fittings there like I do, go ahead and offset the fittings a little bit. That way you can still get your manifold gauge sets on there. Or you're gonna have a really bad time when you put it all together and realize you can't get those on. I like to use trinary switches on AC systems instead of binary switches. Let me tell you why. First off, you've got your protection in there so if it overpressurizes and it doesn't explode, it'll shut it down. Good, I'll, ex I'll take that. Number two, it controls your AC fans, and you're like, man, my, my computer already controls my AC fans. I don't need no AC Twitch telling me what not to do. I like how it makes the fan cycle on and off instead of just dawn when the AC compressor's on. This car on the highway, about 55 miles an hour, if the fans turn on, it starts to overheat. The fans actually become a hindrance at that speed. So if I turn the AC on and my fans turn on, it really overheat. Or if you've got like an LS swap, you could go into the second fan control and make it so it only turns on above a certain speed and wire that to a relay that disconnects your main fan relay so that way it doesn't make connection. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty good tip right there. Just go ahead and put that in your back pocket for later because uh, it took me a few years to figure that one out. Or just use the trinary switch and it doesn't worry. It don't, it's fine. Just use the trinary switch. Always keep your equipment in tip top shape. As you can see, I've replaced the blue knob of this manifold gauge set with a pair of vice grips because the other one fell off. And I couldn't be bothered to pick it back up off the ground and seven years later, I still never picked it up off the ground. So once you get all the air evacuated out of this sick puppy, uh, just leave her alone for like an hour. Don't even look at it unless you need to look at it and go do something else in the meantime. You could wait less than an hour if you like to do things twice and you're not going to notice the leak that you have or you could wait more than an hour because you're lazy and just said you're going to do this project another day. That's what I did. Now I just got to sit back and take her for a ride and enjoy the cool vibes. Just go ahead and click this on. Well, no, hang on. Some, this is my... This is, this is my box where I store my vintage air stuff until I can figure out a center console, but aim your vents a little bit and well, come on, stay here. All right, move up, move up. All right. And now you've got yourself a fully functional AC system. So enjoy it before anything goes wrong. Uh, the time is ticking.